I don't know if y'all can hear that, but she sure is loud. Good morning to you. Come on in here. We got about 60 seconds for us to get started. Get your tea, get your coffee, get whatever you need. Get whatever it is that you need to warm up, tea, coffee, water, get your Bibles, get your pads. I love this little pad, this little purple pad. When it's all written out of, I'm going to be sad because I like the color. All right. It is 5.30 exactly. We're going to be in the book of Galatians chapter three this morning. So good morning to you all. I am Reverend Cheryl Oliver. This is just for my soul ministries. We are a discipleship ministry growing in God. And we just invite you to come along and grow with us. At the moment, we are completely virtual. But if God says the same, I want you all to get ready for some events in 2022. Our vision here at Just For My Soul Ministries is peace and purpose for the soul through truth, love, and relationship. Through truth, love, and relationship. Our mission is to love and serve everyone through biblical teaching, personal testimony, prayer, and mentoring for the glory of God. Nobody walks this journey alone. That's the mentoring. That's the relationship with God and with others. This journey called life is not meant to be lived or walked alone. So that is who we are. This is what we are doing. And so we have several avenues and opportunities for you to grow with us at Just For My Soul Ministries. You are participating in one of them right now. Our prayer moments every Wednesday morning, 5.30 a.m. Facebook Live. Brief Bible study followed by prayer. And then tonight, our prayer moment is at 9 p.m. Conference call only. You can visit our website to get that number. So other opportunities you have to grow with us every second Saturday, 9.30 a.m. Facebook Live. We have teaching sessions and we have been in these um, how, what, and why, how, what, and why of repentance. We did that in May. How, what, and why of prayer. We did that in June. And you're actually going to get part two <clears throat> to that one because we did the what and the why of prayer in June. In July, as a matter of fact, July 10th, this coming Saturday, we're going to do the how of prayer. Simply, very simple, the how. So prayer actually took two sessions. So you have our monthly teaching sessions every second Saturday of the month, 5.30 a.m. You also have another opportunity to grow on the fourth Thursdays. The fourth Thursdays of the month, we do our soul healing sessions. They have been phenomenal. Oh my gosh. We come on on set, um, Thursday, fourth Thursday evenings about 7 p.m. And we do a live session for about 30 minutes. It's the, it is the, um, what is this thing we on here? Zoom. It is the Zoom meeting after we come off the live feed that is so powerful that lasts from about 7 30 to 8 30. Um, not an empty seat. I reserve it for six to eight people. I might squeeze in nine. If you're interested, just um, direct message me through Messenger here on the social media platform, Facebook. Um, and if there's a seat available, I will let you know and reserve it for you and send you that Zoom meeting invite. Um, but I'll have to tell you, this will be our third, let me see, one, two, three, four, July 22nd will be our third soul healing session. It is a new um, platform that we've launched 
and we haven't had an empty seat yet in the private Zoom meeting. So fourth, fourth Thursdays of the month at 7 p.m., 7 p.m. to 7.30 is live, 7.30 to 8.30 is a private Zoom meeting, and those are called soul healing sessions. Next, another opportunity you have to grow with us. Um, we will be starting our fall book study August 21st. That's a Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m., August 21st. And this is our book. Oh, the light is all in the way. All right. This is our book, Discerning the Voice of God, How to Recognize when God is Speaking by Priscilla Schreier. Discerning the Voice of God, How to Recognize When God is Speaking by Priscilla Schreier. You get it right off of Amazon. This top part right here reads, completely revised and expanded new study questions. Discerning the Voice of God, How to Recognize When God is Speaking by Priscilla Schreier. We will begin this book study August 21st, 9.30 a.m. And just heads up, we will be doing two chapters every time we meet. That's not a set date for the book study. You just got to look for the postings. Um, but we, when we do meet for the book study, it will be two chapters every time we meet. Um, and we're going to announce a very, very, very special event toward the end of this book study. You want to Come along for the journey, be along for the ride, and definitely at the end, participate in what we are planning for you. Okay, so we have a couple of other opportunities you have to grow with us, but I'll save that for later. You got prayer moments, monthly teaching sessions, uh, our, our fourth Thursday soul healing sessions, and our JMS fall book study coming up. All right. All right. Good morning to everybody. Good morning, De Dorothy, Debbie, Hazel. Good morning to you. I hope you all. Good morning, Mama D. I hope you all got all of those announcements. I will be posting stuff on the Facebook feed for our group and the page. So you will um, get all the information for your book and everything. So I pray that you all have, have had a good week. And we're going to jump into our Listen. Thank you for your patience and all those announcements. All right, do I have everything? Okay. This particular um, little Bible devotion we're going to read in Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 through 9. <clears throat> As I was reading it, and it's a very beautiful passage, just thinking to myself. Um, this helps us if we ever get off um, in our thinking about God's love, God's approval, our worth. Um, sometimes we equate our earthly relationships to our heavenly relationship, and that's a huge mistake. Love this way, man to man, sister to sister, on jobs, approval, um, I said love. Sometimes it's done a lot by um, acceptance and who you are and because of some quality you have, a person loves you or something you're doing for them, they love you. Um, or you perform a certain way on a job, you get more and more approval. Um, when we were in school, we perform right, we get the good grades. And it's easy to understand love and acceptance by performance and approval and your output or even how you look, you know, you get certain attention. So it gets real tricky when we have to come and to understand a love from God is just because he wanted to give it to us. You're not cute enough for it. You're not good enough for it. You know, you can go to church seven days a week and be on every auxiliary. 
don't make no difference. Um, you can never have set a foot one day in the church. It, it's, it's, it don't make a difference with his love. He gives us his grace. He gives us his, what is this grace you're talking about, Reverend Oliver? It's his favor, his help, his love, because he wants to, period. And it's hard sometimes for us to make that switch. Um, and truth be told, in some spiritual arenas, they even, um, I guess, help the false thinking of works, works, appearances, works, speak right, look right, act right, okay? And it has absolutely nothing to do with God's grace, God's mercy. It's, he gives it to us freely. He gives it to us because it's his desire. He gives it to us because he's God. He gives it to us because he loves us. He gives it to us because he wants to. Okay. Now, receiving it, because he freely gives it away. Receiving it is a different story. You have to believe that you know, somebody loves me that much. I don't have to perform. I don't have to act right, look right, do right, make straight A's, whatever, whatever it is. I don't have to get cleaned up. That's the, that's the punch word. I got to get myself together before what? Ain't none of us together. Okay. Ain't none of us together. God's grace and God's mercy is because of, check this out, who he is not because of who you are. There it is. That's what I'm trying to say. It's because of who he is. It's not because of who you are. Because if that was the case, would none of us have it? Bet your bottom dollar on that. His grace and mercy is because of who he is, not because of who you are or what you do. Now, let's get into reading our text this morning. Verse, chapter three, verse one. Oh, foolish Galatians. And you have to go back and look at our previous uh, Wednesday mornings to get the history of um, these Galatians. I won't take more time in repeating that again. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly, clearly portrayed among you as crucified. Meaning you all got the gospel uncut. You know exactly what God, what Jesus did for you on the cross and you received it. Paul is saying, so who has bewitched you, you foolish folks? Who has come in and caused confusion? when you got the undulterated truth. And it says here in verse two, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law? Meaning, did, were you good enough for it? Did you receive the spirit of God because you held all of the principles of the law correctly? Or did you receive it by hearing of faith? meaning you heard the gospel and just believed it and his spirit filled you up because you believed, okay? So that's a rhetorical question. Paul kind of digging at him. Verse three, are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by your flesh? Paul says, you just believed in your heart you just believe freely by the spirit. Something hit you. Your eyes were open. You received Christ. You received the gospel. And then he goes on and says, he says, are you being made perfect by the flesh? You received it freely by the spirit, by love, by belief. And now 
you're thinking you can work for it. Now you're thinking you're going to be perfected by flesh, by works, by, by keeping seasons and traditions. Verse four, have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Verse five, therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? You heard it, you believed it. He has worked miracles. He supplied you with his spirit. Why? Because you believed by faith. That's, Paul says this 500 different kinds of ways in the book of Galatians, because it's just that important. He just, he just on them and he won't let up. He says, <laughs> I was one of the, the, the study guides I was reading. It said this, would you rather earn and deserve his grace and his mercy, salvation, or just believe and receive? I would rather just believe it and receive it. I don't want to earn and deserve, okay? Because that's what they were doing by believing the gospel by faith alone freed, liberated, and then they go back, as Paul says, to bondage, thinking now. As a matter of fact, it's an insult to Christ's death on the cross that you want to go back to works of your flesh, obeying the principles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the law. It is an insult to Christ. Okay, so you want to earn it and deserve it, or you want to believe it and receive it, all right? So then he goes on in verse six and says, just as Abraham believing God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, that's back in Genesis 15 and six. Let me tell you why Paul kind of dug at him with Abraham because they believed in the father of Abraham as one of their forefathers, a uh, highly, he says, okay, so let me go back to something that you guys can understand and believe. Paul says, let's talk about Abraham. Righteousness was accounted to him because he believed, not because he kept the law. That is written nowhere, not because of his works. He didn't earn it. He just believed. And because he believed, God blessed him. God gave him a gospel, the gospel beforehand, before you even received it. He got it, believed it, and God accounted it to him as righteousness. How about that? I was just amazed at reading this and the beauty of this text. So he says, just as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness, verse seven, therefore, now that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Know that only those who are of faith. Know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And see, that kind of got them, okay? Because the, the, the Jewish culture, you know, highly exalted Father Abraham. He says, but guess what? Only those who are of faith our sons of Abraham. See, Paul got them right there. Paul got them right there. I can imagine that their eyes got this big. Oh my God. Because Abraham was not, was not used by God because of his works. He earned it. He was so special. No, it was by his faith. All right, look that up, Genesis 15 and 6. Verse eight, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify Gentiles, meaning the people who were not Jewish, by faith. I'm gonna read that again. Verse eight, and scripture foreseeing that God would justify Gentiles by faith 
preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, in you all nations shall be blessed. Verse 9, so then those who are of faith are blessed with the blessing of Abraham. How about that? How about that? See, see, Paul puts some on him right there. Paul puts some on him right there. So only those by faith are truly sons of Abraham. And he says, and so then those who are of faith are blessed with the blessing of Abraham. And they had studied and known all about that in their Jewish culture. So for him to say that, it was just like, wow, you're right, Paul. What are we doing? Because Paul was like, I don't know what y'all doing. Going back to works, going back to trying to earn stuff, going back to um, trying to prove that you're good enough. Salvation through grace by faith alone. Salvation through grace, by faith alone. Salvation is through God's grace, by faith in him alone, period, period. Now, once that process happens, he fills you with his spirit. And then naturally, as your relationship grows and gets deeper, things starts to fall off of your life that are not of God. Because God said, I created you in my image. We are forever striving to get back to that image by the power of his spirit, by falling in love with him, by obeying his word because of love. Obedience because of love is always better than obedience because you, you've been made to do it. Obedience because you have just fallen in love with him is so much sweeter. So always pursue a love journey, a love journey. Obedience will follow. Right actions will follow. Chase loving God. Then your obedience is sweet. A lot of times we um, come after people with a bunch of do's and don'ts. Don't do this, don't do this. God don't like this. Don't do that, 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 that. But God. Just, just approach folks with how much they're loved by God. And as that relationship starts to grow and fester and bloom, the Holy Spirit gets in there and starts to work out hurts and pains and traumas and heals. Obedience come naturally. Why? because you love him, because you love him. God in um, latter and part of the New Testament says, how do I know you love me? Because you obey my commandments. That's how I know you love me. I would rather obey because I'm in love than obey because I'm made to, because if it's just because I'm made to, it's just works, it's just actions. But when we obey God because we love him, that means he has our soul and our mind. Think about that. Think about that. Invite individuals, family members, and even your own walk to grow deeper with Christ by falling in love, not trying to do things right or wrong. And is he going to like this? Is he not going to like that? That's not how you come into relationship. That's, that's not going to work. That's not going to work love. Just receive the fact that somebody loves you deeper than any human being ever could. Somebody sacrificed his life when he didn't have to, but he did it because I loved you. Somebody prepared a permanent, eternal home for you. Somebody gives you grace, favor, mercy, all because they want to, they desire to. You didn't even have to work for it. Fall in love with that. Somebody defeats your enemies while you sleep. Somebody keeps things that will devastate you and take you out of here away from you. Somebody loves you enough to know enough pain to come into your life to grow you up like a good parent. 
fall in love with it. Obedience comes. Sweet obedience comes when you love it. All right. That's all I got for you this morning. Yes, it is. So Galatians chapter one, I'm um, chapter three, verses one through nine. That's what we just did. I hope it has blessed you like it blessed me. We got to shift this worldly thinking of approval, achievement. I got to get, even in school, I got to get a little satisfactory in my conduct. It doesn't work like that with God. His grace, his mercy, his love toward us is just because he desired to give it to us. He created you and he wants to love you. There's nothing you got to work for, nothing you can be good enough for. He's just saying, believe it and come on in. And I'll work at cleaning you up. I'll work at healing your soul. I'll work at making you look by, like me by my spirit. All right. Amen. I could go on and on with that because it's so sweet. Good morning, Miss Ruthie. Yes to Neil. Speak Holy Spirit, baby. He grace in all of us this morning. Uh, yes, yes. God's grace is because of who he is, not because of who we are. Oh, that was good to me too. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning. Yes, Mama D. The word gives, yeah, the world gives performance. God's love just is. God's love just is. And remember that for those of you who have little children, just start talking to them about how much they're loved, how this love is free, how God wants to help them, how God wants to give them grace, how God wants to help them be strong. And just then as they fall in love with it, the natural order, the next step is if I love you, I'm going to do what you say. Because I know you love me. All right? Let's not come at folks with, do this, do this, don't do this, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't, God don't like ugly, da, 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 da. okay, all that. No, I'm not saying that's not true. I'm not saying that's not how you get in. It's a love relationship before it's anything. Yes, Mama D, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Yes, Linda, obedience because of love is much sweeter Oh, yes, it is. Think about those days back when you was in love. Come on now. Don't act brand new with me this morning. Good morning to you all. All right. Thank you for your comments. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning, Evelyn. So that is our morning devotion. It has been right at 30 minutes. I'm chuckling on the inside because I don't think we've done that in a long time. We get going and it'd be like 6.15. All right, so we're gonna pray now. Um, I pray that those announcements, you guys wrote the, and jotted those opportunities down, the upcoming book study and events. Um, I hope that this message has blessed you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we are preparing for our day, Lord, we want to thank you for this reminder in Galatians chapter three, verse one through nine. We want to thank you. And in our Thanksgiving, we also want to ask for your forgiveness. We want to ask for your forgiveness. If there's anything in our thinking, in our attitude, in our selfishness, where we even felt like, thought like, or attempted to earn any of your mercy or grace because of actions, because of attitude, because of a clean track record, God, please forgive us. Your mercy and your grace is because of who you are, not because of who we are. So Father, repent when we thought we could slide into your goodness like we have to work for the approval and acceptance of this world and other human beings. Father, thank you for being nothing like this world. Thank you for being nothing like human individuals that we have to fall in love with or love, God. Thank you, Father, for pure love. Thank you, Father, for a love that is freely given because you desire to give it to us. Forgive us, Master, if we ever thought we had to be good enough or we were not good enough or worthy enough, because the truth is, God, we're not. But Father, we thank you for who you are. May we give that truth to somebody because of who he is, he loves you, not because of who you are. 
And not only may we live it, believe it, and give it away, but every time that word is given, God, it is my prayer that it is received, that you are received, that love is received, and the power of that word as we freely give it away, more people will come to love you and know you for the good God that you are. We thank you for salvation by grace, by faith alone, just because we believe. We thank you for the blessing of Abraham, just because we believe it was granted unto him because he believed. So, Father, I pray for everybody watching. Each of us have a specific and special set of circumstances in our lives that either seems to worry us, distract us, weigh us down, um, cause us to maybe not even think about you and love on you as much as we should, because it maybe have even become a little small idol to us, God. So we ask you, Father, to put all of that in your hand whether it's looking for work and employment or shelter or food or healing in our bodies or relationships with loved ones, children, grandchildren, on our jobs, whatever it is, God, we put those cares and concerns in your hands, in your hands today because your hands are big enough to hold it all. And may we just rest as we turn it over. May we just rest knowing that our father who loves us got really big hands and his hands can hold our hearts. His hands can hold our fears. His hands can hold anything that concerns us or disturbs us or cause us any kind of angst. He can hold it and give us rest at the same time. Father, as we trust you. So help us trust you more, God. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. I pray that you have an awesome and wonderful day. I'm going to try to do exactly the same. Have an awesome and wonderful day. Go down here and get ready for work. I love you. I look forward to you being with us on Saturday for the How portion of prayer. 9.30 a.m. Facebook Live. And that's all I got for you. You be blessed and always remember God, God is truly the lover of your soul. Bye-bye for now.